Today we're going to be talking about the Polaroid camera of the 1830s. Not taking a selfie with this baby. Hey, I'm Mark, your host. Thanks for joining us for episode 5. Back in episode 2, I told you about my love for archival photographs. And during that journey, I learned about a Frenchman named Louis de Guerre who back in the 1830s is credited with co-creating the modern photography process. Daguerre was a really fascinating man. He was really interested in any kind of lighting trick or illusion. Anyway, Daguerre used a chemical process to make a photo on a metal plate that he took out of the camera, kind of like a Polaroid. The result were early photographs called daguerreotypes, and they were stunning. Remember, nobody had seen photographic images before, so for the first time they might be seeing a relative from far away, or a celebrity they've heard about, or a political figure like the president, hmm, or a far off place they could only dream of visiting. So very quickly daguerreotypes became all the rage. There's still people producing daguerreotypes today, but it's quite a bit of a complex chemical process involving bromide and heated mercury and sulfate something, and I got a C in chemistry, and I'm pretty sure that stuff will kill you. So a few years back, my son and I decided we'd create the non-lethal version of a daguerreotype camera just from stuff around the house and Lowe's and the office supply store. So the camera base, we just stained some pieces of wood and sanded them to make them look aged. And the center is just a black flex folder from the office supply store. The front area is a gold spray painted PVC collar. The lens is actually a magnifying glass from the dollar store. And the cap for the lens is one of those furniture movers that goes underneath your uh, couch. Uh, we also made some plates that uh, go in and out of the back for the images. So to create our image, we downloaded a free daguerreotype file from lostandtaken.com. And with a little Photoshop magic, we produced an image that I hope that Louis Daguerre would say is, C'est magnifique! If you want to learn more about the process of creating a real daguerreotype, or you just want some Photoshop resources to create a fake one of your own, see links in the description below. Next week, we're going to learn how Louis Daguerre indirectly helped develop some of the most beloved Walt Disney World attractions. But for now, I'm Mark for your creative brief.